Hey guys, this is Nick. I've uh, been looking around on the internet for a, a correct procedure on how to do a compression test on a BMW N52 motor. Um, I couldn't find a lot of uh, useful videos that actually uh, considered the effect of the Valvetronic technology on this motor. And effectively everybody was uh, suggesting that the compression test was the same procedure as what you would do with a normal combustion motor with uh, with a throttle body controlling the amount of uh, air entering into the engine and, and your valve lift. So this is going to be a video explaining how to do this correctly with a BMW N52 motor. This is my BMW 330i track car. Um, so a little bit of the engine bay will look a little bit different to a normal stock uh, N52 engine bay. But let's start over here. So with your N52 motor, the critical item that we need to consider here is this motor. And this controls an eccentric shaft, which gets measured by a sensor here. And that effectively is how your intake valves are controlled on your N52 motor and not exclusively by your, your throttle plate and your, your normal uh, kind of cam lift. So effectively to have an accurate compression test, we need to ensure that the Valvetronic motor, which is able to control the lift of the intake valves, is set to the correct position so that our compression test provides accurate numbers. This Valvetronic motor has a adjuster, which uses an Allen key, which will allow us to manually adjust the Valvetronic motor during this procedure. And what I'm doing at the moment is I'm following the procedure as outlined by BMW's ISDA. So effectively, I've got a test procedure here, ABL, DIT, you can see the compression pressure for my 3 Series E90 N52. And currently, I'm going through this test where it asks you to, to effectively idle the car. You start the engine, idle the car, then it says, great, we're, we're good to go, stop the motor. And now it's telling me what the position is of the eccentric shaft. And it wants us to switch off the motor and using an Allen key to adjust the angle of the eccentric shaft to the target value. Currently we're at 58 degrees and we want to target 176 degrees. While we're doing this test, the motor and our car, we will need to have um, with the ignition on. So, that's going to draw quite a lot of power from the battery. So what I've done is I've got my battery hooked up to a Victron battery charger. And we're going to start with this test. So yeah, hopefully this will show you exactly how to do a compression test on a BMW N52. I'll show you the next steps. All right, so we're starting to adjust the Valvetronic motor and the eccentric shaft to the position as desired. I've got a four millimeter Allen key in the adjuster slot over there. It fits nice and snug. And I'm rotating this Allen key in the counterclockwise direction over here. So right now I am taking the key from here and rotating counterclockwise. If we go to my ISTA setup on the laptop, we can see that we have moved the actual value from approximately 58 degrees. Now with about three uh, one quarter turns, we've gone to approximately 69 degrees on the actual value. So it's going to take quite a number of counterclockwise rotations in order to get to the target value of 176 degrees. So effectively, just a, a summary, we're using a four millimeter Allen key. I've got the plug plugged out of the Valvetronic motor and I'm going to be rotating this Allen key to be able to get to the target angle. All right, uh, finally got enough uh, rotations with this uh, four millimeter Allen key on our Valvetronic motor to be able to get the angle of the eccentric shaft to the target of 176 degrees. I will try and confirm whether um, uh, BMW uh, INPA will allow you to measure the angle of the eccentric shaft because I realize that not everybody will have access to ISDA. 
um, and that will make it very difficult to, to reach this uh, very precise value over here. All right, now that we've got to the target angle, uh, click next on our program, and it now wants us to unplug the connector uh, for fuel injection. So there is of course disconnecting here, which effectively allows you to disconnect power to the fuel pump. But I, my interpretation of this requirement is just to disconnect at the fuel injector location. So there's no single plug that I know of that supplies just this connector rail. Obviously this, this wiring harness loom thing supplies a bunch of items. It kind of wraps around here and goes to this um, harness loom, which supplies ignition coils. Then also then comes off this way, which supplies the oil pressure switch and the um, Vanos solenoids down there. So there's, there's no single disconnect. So what I'm going to be doing is just removing this entire uh, connector loom harness thing from the top of the injectors. So to do that, I've removed the top hat from the valve cover. So that just pulls off because it's got the little rubber bungs around these points over here. There's a couple more at the back there. It wasn't too difficult to get it off. And now holding it onto the injectors is a small metal clip. You can see I've disengaged the one over here and the second one over there. And that's what it looks like when it's engaged, holding this plastic harness loom holder onto the top of the injectors. And it's quite simple to get them off. You simply use a, a screwdriver just to pry the one side away to the side. Okay, you can see I've just pried that to the side and that will allow me to lift it up. Obviously we've got to pry them all away before we can try to do that. And that should allow us to disconnect that from the injector rail and therefore they won't get any power or signal to inject fuel when we start with the actual compression test. I'll show you what that looks like once I've got that disengaged and can pull that away from the injector um, set. All right, there we go. So the injector harness is disconnected from the injectors. That wasn't too difficult. You can see it's just only a small um, a bit that the little clip is, is pulled away. It's not completely removed because you really don't want to lose those and try and look around in the engine bay for any of these clips. And then when we put it back together, what we'll be doing is you can actually reseat them completely now and they will just click as you press it over the injector. So yeah, injectors are now no longer connected to power and, uh, and communication. So next step of the process, let's see what that entails. So unplug connector for fuel injection. And now we want to get to the point where we connect pressure adapter to any cylinder. So what I'm going to start doing is that part of a normal compression test, you'll have to remove um, all of your ignition coils and all of your spark plugs. So I'm going to start doing that. So starting by disconnecting the little connector. This one may need a little bit more provocation. Get that released and then I'll pull my um, ignition coils out, all six of them, and I'll start removing the spark plugs. Uh, just remember that you, you want to be keeping them uh, matched. So keep your ignition coil one marked and you know where to put it back. Same for two all the way through to six. Don't let those just mix around because your car's uh, adaptations is, are based on the matching of this hardware. All right, so we're pretty much there to perform the compression test and I'll tell you uh, how we do it now that you've uh, disconnected your fuel rail um, while well, your fuel rail uh, injector uh, harness connectors. Um, now it's asking, well, the program asks uh, for you to start doing your, your compression test. So what you want to do is you want to have your compression tester. This is the unit um, I'll be using and uh, it just needs to have the right little uh, connector onto your spark plug. Um, size and that's going to uh, be threaded into one of the um, cylinders. You can see all the spark plugs are removed, all of my ignition coils are removed and then one other thing that the um, that the, the TIS, the technical information system recommends is that you need to disable the ignition system so that we don't have any kind of uh, um, high voltage or any kind of uh, uh, 
problematic or concerning uh, electrical condition at our connectors over here. So you should have an ignition um, control fuse in your fuse box, something like that. Um, I've got a main uh, power supply relay to my uh, DME. So I'm able to switch that off over there, but you should be able to pull a fuse uh, in your fuse box, which will disable the ignition system of your car so that your uh, ignition coils cannot uh, be charged and operate during the, um, when you start actuating your starter motor. So yeah, we're gonna spin that into, into cylinder one. And effectively what you're going to do then is you're going to, um, you're going to crank the car. This is best done with two people. Um, so what I have found is that the car needed about eight to 10 cranking revolutions. You can, you can hear the cyclic uh, kind of behavior. So you kind of count 10 cranking re revolutions. It takes about 15, 15 or so seconds, um, I would estimate. But yeah, just listen to the revolutions and it allows the, the pressure reading, your compression reading on here to kind of stabilize at a peak. You wanna make sure that you replicate that with the exact same number of cranks per cylinder. So don't do 15 cranks on cylinder one and only 12 there. You wanna have an equal and fair test. And yeah, you pretty much do that. Um, obviously you get your battery charger disconnected, otherwise it may try to, to draw current uh, from that supply if your battery's a bit weak, so get that disconnected. Your battery's gonna be doing a lot of hard work now, so as soon as that job is done, get it back onto a battery charger. So yeah, we did the test on, on this uh, system over here and we're able to get very consistent readings at approximately 11.5 bar or basically in this green zone over here just before 1200 is effectively what I was getting across all six cylinders um, and I will find now a um, some information in terms of what is the expect, expected uh, compression ratio for this N52 motor. Uh, bearing in mind, this, this is quite a high mileage motor. We've got uh, over 250,000 kilometers on this motor without having any kind of rebuild or um, any kind of rejuvenation uh, of this motor in terms of piston rings and seals and uh, checking valve uh, um, uh, sealing and things like that. But yeah, happy with the the compression test, uh, even numbers across all six uh, cylinders. Uh, just a reminder, so we got about 11.5 bar on this test, but uh, your results may vary, your mileage may vary, uh, depending on your piece of equipment, the age of your motor, but I'll try to provide some indication of what BMW uh, provides in terms of the uh, normal compression uh, ratio numbers for this motor. Now that the compression test is done, um, the system is asking just to reconnect the connector at the Valtronic motor and the connector for your fuel injectors. So it, it hasn't asked us to, to wind that eccentric shaft back. I'm assuming that the Valtronic is going to uh, reset itself once it's uh, plugged in and, and initializes. So yeah, the, the system is uh, quite clear on that. Just uh, plug everything back in. Once everything's uh, good to go, go and clear your fault memory. You're gonna have faults on the various items because uh, your car has not been able to start. Um, so clear those, those faults, uh, let the car rest for a couple of minutes and then we should be able to start her back up. Hi guys, uh, so I tried to get some information uh, from the web and just couldn't find any credible documentation with regards to uh, the expected figures that uh, BMW would quote for the compression test values. Um, so uh, my values, we got between 11.5 and 11.75 bar uh, per cylinder. Um, and that translates to approximately 165 to 170 PSI. Um, and I found one thread on the, on the, on the net which seem to uh, have exactly the same numbers uh, as those um, right across the cylinder range. So I, I expect that those numbers are, are quite, uh, quite normal um, and hopefully indicative of a, of a healthy motor. Um, just some uh, more info on the test. So as, as soon as I, I put everything back together um, and uh, cleared all the fault codes um, using my uh, programming tool, uh, then started the motor and it, it ran a bit rough uh, in the beginning um, and I was a bit worried that, that something had gone haywire uh, specifically with setting such um, a, a drastic um, eccentric shaft angle um, and even though the, the uh, plug was back on the, the Valtronic motor. Um, so it, it, I just had to switch off the motor, uh, I cleared codes again and then on the second start the car was absolutely back to normal. So. Uh, don't uh, be uh, afraid if, if, if that does happen the first time. Um, it seems to kind of clear itself uh, uh, after kind of a, a switch off. I, I did then clear codes again. I didn't find anything, but I just decided to call, read, read the entire car and just make sure that everything was 
was happy and, and, and no faults were present. Uh, started the car again and everything was nice and smooth and, and, and good to go. Obviously, just check all of your connections because you've uh, now uh, removed uh, the connection to the uh, fuel injectors and you've also removed connections to your ignition coils. Make sure everything is seated and uh, and uh, plugged in nice and firmly and, and snugly. Um, and with all that back together, including your, your, your Veltronic motor, everything should be just fine. So yeah, hope that helped uh, anybody looking to do a compression test on a BMW N52 motor. Um, and I'm assuming this will also extend to anybody uh, trying to do a compression test with a uh, one of the BMW Veltronic motors, um, which uh, exceeds beyond the N52 motor.